All right, hello, welcome to section 8.6. Trying something a little different with my little face here. Uh, fun fact about this, this sweatshirt I've worn probably like five or six days in a row. I feel like quarantine world. I just kind of get up, put on a sweatshirt and start making videos or get ready for school or whatever. Um, but I also think it's interesting, like how many times do you wear a piece of clothing before washing it? Like something like jeans or the sweatshirt. I feel like I'm not working out, then oftentimes I'll, I'll wear it you know, I don't know, a few days, but anyways, you can email me comments if you have any comments on that. Um, yeah. Anyways, today, 8.6, we're going to solve rational expressions. This is the last section in chapter eight. So I'll draw a sad face here because there's no more chapter eight. I'm sure you're all disappointed that we're going to be done with it. Um, and yeah, there's basically just going to be a strategy for it. So I'm going to dive right into it. Um, you might want to copy down like generally there's multiple ways to do this, right? But the way I'm going to do them in these videos is I'm going to get a common denominator. If that's not already true, this problem already has a common denominator. But if it didn't, I would start there. Multiply both sides by the denominator and it'll disappear. And then you can solve it with algebra steps. Okay, so um, just to kind of tackle this basic one here, it already has a common denominator of 5. And so the trick is this means 2x divided, this means divide by 5, and this is 4 divided by 5. So the idea is if we multiply by 5, that'll undo a divide 5. So boom, boom, it's gone. And then we just have 2x equals 4. All right, and then from there, it's just pretty straightforward. Divide by 2, and you get uh, 2 as your solution for x. All right, so... It's kind of, that one is pretty straightforward, um, but as they get harder, the tricky parts will be like finding the right common denominator. Sorry, I not know what's going on. My eraser is not working. This should be a two. Sometimes my thing kind of freaks out, so I apologize for that, but this should be a two. Okay. Um, I want to point out real quick, there is more than one way to do this. So, um, if you remember before from fractions, um, if you have two fractions that are equal, so let's just say two fractions that are equal. It's a mathematical property that the things across from them multiply to the same number. So like two times three in this case is equal to one times six. Okay, and that's true of any two fractions that are equal. If I took another pair here, five halves is equal to four tenths. And you looked at the things across from each other and multiplied them, you'd find that they are equal. Right? In this case, it'd both be 20. So, uh, when you have fraction equals fraction, you can do this cross product. So on this question, we could do 4 times 5 and set that equal to 2x times 5, which would be 10x, and then divide by 10 to get 2. Okay, and that's not the way I'm going to do these because you can't do all of them that way, right? So like this next one, you can't quite do that way because there's three fractions instead of just two fractions equal to each other, but I just wanted to point out that that there is multiple ways to do these, um, right? And either way, you should get an answer of two. Okay, so what's different on this next one is there's there's three fractions, uh, but the idea is exactly the same, right? And the first thing is you got to think about a common denominator. All right, so for this one, I kind of start with the biggest number six and say like 12, 12, that's not going to work. So other multiples of 6 would be like 18. That doesn't work for 5. 24, that doesn't work for 5. And then if I get to 30, that works for all of them. Right? So the common denominator we're going to use here is 30. Okay. And so to get a common denominator of 30, then this one needs to be multiplied by 10. This one needs to multiply by 6. And then the last one, we need to multiply by 5. So you get 5x up top there. Okay, and so then this part is kind of the, the magic step to this, is now that we have these denominators of 30, I'm going to multiply by 30, and that's going to wipe out all the denominators. Okay, so the, the short part of this is you get uh, 10 plus 12 equals 5x. All right, but sometimes I find students don't quite really understand that idea of canceling out. So if you wanted to write it all out, if I was to take like 30 over 1 times 10 over 30, I would get 
multiply the numerators would be 300, multiply the denominators, and that would be uh, 30, okay, and that reduces to 10. Okay, so the long way is to actually multiply the two fractions together, but what you'll find is this times 30 and the divide 30 cancel out, and so you can just say your answer is just the numerator. Right. Similarly on this one, again, you could multiply it out. 30 times 120 would be 360, and then divide that by 30, and you would get 12. Right. But the fast way is just to cancel out the denominator and say, oh, it's just 12. Okay. So now at this point, we're pretty much done. We have 22 equals 5x. Add the 10 and the 12, and then divide by 5, and our answer is going to be whatever the heck 22 divided by 5 is. I think that's a little bit more than 4, but I'm just going to leave it as a fraction like that. So the answer to this is 22 this. Okay, so all that is from there is to get slightly harder. Um, so this one, I'll have you pause and try it. A quick hint on this is this one on the right doesn't have a, isn't even a fraction, so you don't have to worry about a common denominator here. Just get the fraction ones to have a common denominator and then multiply by that and have it wipe out. So I'll pause the video and give it a shot. All right, so first step is common denominators. And again, I'm not going to worry about the fraction or this thing on the right because that's not really a fraction. I mean, you could make it into negative 2 over 1 if you wanted, but I'm just going to leave it as negative 2 and then not worry about its denominator. So for the other two, 4 and will work. So all we got to do is take this one times 4. And that would give us 24 over 4n, right? Which means the other fraction we didn't have to do anything for, all right? And now, um, now that the denominators match, we just multiply by whatever that denominator is. In this case, 4n. I'm going to take everything on both sides times 4n. So this side they just cancel out. So 24 plus 1. Okay, and then this side, you don't have a denominator to cancel, so I'm just going to do 4n times negative 2 to get negative 8. n, sorry. Negative 2 times 4n is negative 8n. All right, and again, this part, every year students are confused by this, so I'm going to write it out the long way one more time if you want to see it. 24n times, sorry, 4n times 24 over 4n would give you, if you multiply the numerators, it would give you 96n over 4n, and then the n's would cancel, and 96 divided by 4 is just 24. Okay, so you don't have to do that step if you can just realize they just cancel out and you just have the 24 part. All right, at any rate, now I'm pretty much done. 24 plus 1 is 25. Same number of friends as Matt Webb. He has about 25 friends. I calculated. Okay, and then divide by negative 8, so I ran out of space here, but and get n equals uh, 25 over negative 8. And you can put the negative in front if you want, but basically this is a negative number. I'm just going to leave it as an improper fraction like that. All right. Hopefully that makes sense. And we're just going to keep plugging away here. The second thing we'll tackle ones that are a little more advanced, but we're going to get as far as we can um, with this. Skip that one. Okay. So a couple things on this. One. You could certainly do your cross products because you have fraction equals fraction if you want to go that route. The common denominator route is a little bit weird on this one. But if we look at these two denominators, all right, uh, it's basically the situation where if you have like some crazy denominators like 13, and let's say I was adding with something up here and like 59 or something, a common denominator you can get is just multiply the two existing denominators. Right, so if it's weird denominators, that's an easy way to get a common denominator. So that's going to be the case here, um, meaning that the one on the left we just need to multiply by x plus 4, and then the one on the right you multiply by x plus 2. Okay, and then you're going to do that on top and bottom to keep the fraction consistent. And again, this is just to get the common denominator step, right. And what you'll find then is on this fraction, if you multiply this, you'll have negative 3x minus 12. Okay, and then the denominator is just those two binomials multiplied together. Okay, and then on the other side, 
we're going to distribute the minus 4. So negative 4x minus 8. Okay, and the denominator is just the two binomials multiplied together. All right, so now that the denominators are the same, we're dividing by the denominator. That's what this big fraction bar means, right? So it's going to look kind of weird, but we're going to multiply everything by the denominator, which is x plus 4 times x plus 2. Okay, and then it's going to wipe out those denominators. So this multiply will wipe out these denominators, right? So they go boom, boom, and then the numerators are the same, right? So it just cancels them out, and then we're just left with negative 3x minus 12 equals negative 4x minus 8. And it's tempting because you want to, like, multiply these with this on the top, but you don't really have to do that. All you have to do is realize the whole point of that step is multiplying cancels out dividing. So the denominators are gone, and now we have a, no longer have a fraction question. All right, so to finish this one off, just do some algebra steps here. Um, just add 4x to both sides to cancel it out on the uh, right-hand side. So I'd give us x minus 12 equals, that cancels out, so negative 8. And then add 12 to both sides, and we get 4. All right, and I should mention with any equation question, if you're unsure of your answer, you can always put it back in. So I'm running out of space here, but I'll try and put it back in. If x was 4, this side would be negative 3 over 6. And we could think, is that the same thing as if we put 4 here, it'd be negative 4 over 8. And that certainly looks like they're both negative half. So we can kind of verify that this answer has to be right. So that's kind of a good trick if you're, if you're unsure of your answer. All right, one final example for you. Um, every question is a little bit different, but on this one, the one on the right does not have a denominator. So all I'm going to worry about is getting a common denominator on the left, two fractions. Okay, so looking at those, hopefully we're getting good at this common denominator stuff. Um, if not, you can blame me. I'm your teacher. It's your, my fault. Uh, but at any rate, on this fraction, um, if we just take it times x, then we'll have x squared for both denominators. Right, and then the other one we don't have to do anything to. So this one's just going to stay the same, and then this one now is going to have 5x as a numerator. Okay, now the step that again is a little bit goofy, but I'm going to take everything times x squared, and it's going to wipe out these two denominators. Leaves us with just the numerators. So 5x plus 4. And then on this side, there was no denominator to cancel out, so I'm just going to do negative 1 times x squared and give negative x squared. All right, so that side looks quite a bit different. All right, so now we have an equation that has both x to the first and x squared. All right, so hopefully when you hit this equation, you realize you can't just do regular algebra steps, right? And so you can think back to our method for solving an x squared. Solve an x squared. You can use the quad formula. Sorry, my pen is not working again. You can factor. You can use that graph method if you remember how to do that. Okay, but I think for this section, the method I'm going to use is, is just a factor. Okay, so on this particular one, or any of the methods you want to use here, I guess I could add graph, you have to get 0 on one side. So here we can just add x squared to both sides, and then we'll have 0 on one side. All right, and then this one is nice and slick because it factors. Um, and most of the ones I think in this section will factor. So that just splits to x plus 1 and x plus 4. Multiply to 4 and add up to 5. Okay, and then if you use the zero product property and set each one of them to 0, it's a little part. x plus 1 equals 0. x plus 4 equals 0. All right, and then subtract 1. Subtract 1, and you get two answers of x equals negative 1 and x equals negative 4. All right, so slightly different one on that, especially here because you have to remember how to solve an x squared. All right, but hopefully that helps. Um, the next lesson will hit kind of more harder questions on this section. All right, take care.